Hey everybody, Mr. X Stitch here, back with another video. Going to tell you all about my amazing art installation at this year's Handmade Festival. Stay tuned. First things first, I'm out walking my dog this morning, so I might very well fall over the field that I'm walking through at the moment. And if periodically I end up shouting the word herb, that's not Tourette's, that's the dog's name. How are you all? Thanks for the nice feedback from the last post. People not really minding the out and about format. I'm hoping I can make it work. Definitely convenient for me to talk on video like this. But yeah, the reason I'm talking to you now, I had a heck of a weekend this weekend, just gone. Uh, three days at the 2019 Handmade Festival down in London, within which I completed a large-scale X-Stitch graffiti art installation that celebrated Handmade and was one of the stars of the show. The project itself is a bit like yarn bombing and a bit like sort of cross-stitching on a fence, but it was neither yarn bombing or cross-stitching on a fence. So I'm calling it X-Stitch Graffiti for now, because that's kind of what it was. I've been, uh, for those of you who don't know, the Handmade Festival, it's a, a sort of craft festival that's been going on for six years now, down in London, has a wide range of workshops, loads of food and drink for people to try, really nice kind of boutique-y event. It's hosted mainly by Kirsty Allsop, who's a TV celeb over here. But there's lots of quite famous people there. You know, certainly in the world of craft and stuff, I've been going virtually every year and have done various events. And for a while I did a thing called a Molly Makes Mashup, which was a sort of competitive craft event that we used to do on stage with people. And I've taught workshops. I do workshops for up to 100 people there and stuff like that. Great event. Really enjoy it. It's really nice. When you're like in the craft scene like this uh, it's it's a really nice thing it's like a really nice thing being quite well known in the world of craft because you can go to a place like the handmade festival and everyone's like oh are you mr x stitch or a lot of the time they're like are you mr cross stitch but i'm fine with that and they can come up to you and they can think you're marvelous and you can have a great time and it's lovely to meet people who are like you know they know what i'm up to they know i've got kids this and that and the other have a good chat find people who've bought the book find people who are you get, get to know other people doing other interesting crafts and stuff like that. Have a great time. Selfies, all of that sort of stuff. And then literally, you can walk out of it and just go back to normal again. You know, I think a lot of the time we can want to try and be famous. You know, and you think it's going to cure all your problems by being famous. But I'll settle for being famous occasionally. Because then, like today, I can go back to normal, run a few errands. No one's stalking me in the street or anything. I think that's a fair compromise. But yeah, it's a great event, had a lovely time in previous years. And then we got the idea of instead of doing workshops that it might be fun to do something a bit more kind of for the public or a bit more sort of interactive or something. So I proposed this idea of us doing kind of cross stitching on fences. And I've done a few bits of that kind of stuff before, tried it out in various ways. There's a certain skill to it, um, getting the right fence making sure that you get the right materials if you want to do something that lasts a while and stuff like that. But we found these fence panels online that were basically six foot high by three foot wide. I think they're called Harris fencing or something, uh, with a one inch grid. And that was fantastic because basically it just meant get four of those and I knew that I had this canvas that was like 72 rows and 144 columns and that meant I could completely just plot a chart out on it. So I got my best typography skills out, put together this thing that said celebrate handmade nice and typographically. Went to my friends down at Wool Warehouse, managed to find some nice chunky blanket wool, put it all together and then took it down to the show and started on Friday morning. We assembled the fence panels and started stitching. My initial plan was to have the word celebrate handmade with a drop shadow and uh, a sort of sunburst behind it and it would all look just really groovy uh, as I started stitching and I realized quite how long it was going to take to complete the thing 
I realised that I was going to have to very much change the breadth of my vision so that I could actually complete the thing. By the time I'd finished stitching, or by the time, by the time it got to about Friday afternoon, and I'd been stitching from sort of 10.30 in the morning, pretty much all the way through till like three o'clock in the afternoon, I'd just about done the word bra, maybe bra and a couple of bits of extra more, but I suddenly realised the scope of what was happening. And also at that point, I realised that I wasn't going to be able to do actual X's because that would have taken twice as long. And then, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Then, at about the same time on the Friday, I realised that I'd slightly misjudged where the centre of the design was and that actually the majority of the work I'd done that day was about 10 rows too high, so therefore the rest of the design wouldn't fit on the top. That was quite a depressing thought. I won't lie, particularly when you're there and everybody thinks you're doing a great job and you don't want to tell people that you've just made a massive mistake. So I realised, and I sort of realised anyway I would have to do this, but I took the two fence panels I'd been working on in the centre of the four, took them down, stuck them in my car, went to my Airbnb and basically spent another six hours unpicking and then restitching everything I'd done just to get everything back in shape again for the Saturday. So that was nice. So, and by about one o'clock on the Saturday morning, I'd got everything back to where it should have been by the time I finished on the Friday afternoon. Got up at eight o'clock in the morning, went back to the show, put it all together and started stitching again. And I have to give a huge amount of thanks to my friends, Carla Bellicio, who's at Carla Aesthetics on Instagram, and Kirsty Galton, AKA Extreme X Stitch on Instagram, who came along and really helped me on Saturday. Like we really smashed through a lot of the design on Saturday to the point where it was about 85% complete by that point. The good thing about me unpicking it and restarting it was that I was able to not only improve my personal technique for stitching, but also make sure that there were no cross stitches in it. So it was all effectively just like tent stitch, just the bottom stitch all the way around. So we had a big old day on Saturday, big old push, stopped about halfway through for gin and tonic, which is very well deserved. Carried on. On the Sunday, I'd come home. I, did, I stayed in an Airbnb in London on the Friday, about 10 minutes from the show. On the Saturday night, I came home again to see my family. Got up at half five on the Sunday morning, drove back down to the Handmade Fair in London again. Spent all day, got there at eight in the morning, started stitching again, and it got to about midday, and I actually finished the whole phrase. Celebrate Handmade in one color of red. It looked magnificent. I was well pleased. But a tiny little niggling voice in my head was like, that's not quite good enough. So then I decided to get some white wool and start outlining the thing, which did look good. And then basically that kept me going and kept me busy in the sun until about half past five, I think. At which point I actually completely finished the thing with half an hour to spare until the show ended. Marvellous. However, it was an epic achievement. It looked really good. It was really nice to see people standing in front of it and taking photos of it as part of their whole experience and stuff like that. I learned an awful lot about making under pressure and the value of sunscreen early in the day rather than when you start to feel a bit warm. It was great. It was great. It was long. It was tough. It was hard. I was listening to a really good motivational audio book called Can't Hurt Me by a guy called David Goggins who was like, former Navy SEAL plus ultra marathoner guy who is like talking about how to complete tough missions and all the while I'm sitting in the sun winding wool and trying to get things done. But yeah, it was great. It was great fun. The piece looked really good in the end and now it's been folded away and put in storage until next year's show when we will take the idea and build upon it to do even more. But yeah, it's been a right adventure that. I'd like to thank the people from Wall Warehouse for helping me out with the wall because I didn't know what I was on about and they managed to make that good for me. And also the team at Handmade Fair for letting me take a chance with it because, yeah, it was kind of epic. I was really pleased. The typography was sound. It looked great from a distance. I was really satisfied with the way it went in the end. And yeah, I'd like, I'd like to do it again. Maybe not like now. Today, quite frankly, I just want to chill out take the dog 
out for a bit, get some fresh air, hang out with my family. But yeah, it was a good, it was a good event. So yeah, if you've ever done anything outward boundy, yarn bombingy, public stitchingy kind of thing, let me know in the comments. Let me know what your adventures are. I always think it's nice to bring craft to the masses. It's very rewarding to see people seeing what I was doing and then getting the idea that they could do it themselves. Because you can, you know, this, the fence panels that I used were perfect because they provided this sort of square grid that you could really do cross stitch on. However, any chain link fence you can do any kind of yarn bombing type stuff with. I did it before on an allotment of mine. Just started freestyling and doing a bit of graffiti on the fence panels with a bit of wool, just drawing lines wherever. There's no reason why if you've got a fence somewhere, you can't just go to town on it. I was saying to people, you know, you get some wool and if you write messages of love and kindness on the fences, even if they're in the public vicinity and it's kind of like not your property to do so, what are people going to say? You take down those nice messages you've written for the public. I don't think so, do you? So bust it out, have a go, it's a good bit of fun, it's nice and tactile and people connect with it in that way that they do with Needlecraft, you know, they really, uh, it touches people in a way, and it was great to see people of all ages and shapes and sizes really responding well to the piece, so, although there are moments when the sun was beaten down, and I was getting a bit hangry and a bit thirsty, and I still had to soldier on, though so those moments were there to test me. I was glad I did it and it is an absolutely amazing experience. So there you go. Just another day in the wacky world life of the kingpin of contemporary embroidery. And now, my friends, on to the next adventure. Uh, thanks for being here. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, all those kind of jibber-jabber kind of things you have to say when you're on the YouTubes. Until next time, everybody, happy stitching. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did like the video, please feel free to like the video and hopefully you'll subscribe to the channel as well. I'm Mr. X Stitch. I'm the kingpin of contemporary embroidery and I'm here to change the way you think about needlework. So if you're into that sort of thing, subscribe to the channel and join us for the ride. Thanks very much.